Hey church, great to be joining with you. I hope that you're joining with me from a hub today. And uh, if you are, that just means that you're doing church somewhere with other people, which is great. We've done this season of being in our PJs. We've done this season of um, doing church in bed, alone, at home, whatever that looked like for you. But now it is time to do church with other people people that's what hubs are all about and so um, hopefully you're in a hub today if you haven't got there yet I just encourage you this week uh, register for a hub if you don't know who you want to go with or anything like that call the office and have a chat with Heather and she will help find the perfect hub for you I also I wanted to let you know too that we have been uh, really intentional about this decision to transition into hubs rather than um, back into our Sunday gatherings again and the main reason for that is just that as we've been praying and really seeking God on this we believe that Holy Spirit has just been leading us into this place and so we're pretty faith-filled that in this season um, God can do some really great thing uh, great things and that as you spend time with those people um, whether it's every Sunday or some of those Sundays for the month of August and we see what happens after that but that God can do some really great stuff in that space. And so we're looking forward to that. Um, today we are launching a new series. It's lining up with our launch of hubs. We're launching this new series. A new series is called Church Is. And each week we're going to be looking at what the Bible has to say about church. And we're going to be looking into what God's plan for the church is and how you and I fit in that plan. And um, I think it's really relevant as we're in this space of maybe not being able to meet as the large church that we know and we're meeting in these smaller groups um, that we're having a look at this idea of, well, what is church? And so what I really want to do as we get started today is to pray for you wherever you are and just pray that God will really meet you. So why don't you just take a moment and pray with me this morning. Father, we just uh, thank you that as we gather together today, uh, morning, morning, night, afternoon, whatever it looks like, Father, we just thank you that you meet us, that your presence can be here with us in this place. And Holy Spirit, we just want to give you this time right now and invite you and welcome you to come and to work in us. We pray for transformation. We pray for revelation as we come to your word. And we just pray for everyone that we're with or for those who are alone today that no one's going to miss out on anything, Father, that we'll get to meet with you, we'll get to encounter you in this place, that you'll be ministering to us, Lord, and that people are going to be blessed in this time. And so we just give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, this week's message is titled, Church is Us. And I know this sounds obvious, uh, but the church is not a building. Um, so often we use this language where we call the building that we meet in for church, the church. And the building might be the place where the church gathers, but the building is not the church. The church is a building and the people of God are the people who make up the church. And we're going to have a look at what the Bible has to say about this in more detail over the coming weeks. But as I was thinking about this idea of church and what is the church, I was thinking about our journey as Hope Community Church. We're seven years in now. And I was thinking back to the very beginning and what it looked like and what our journey has, um, has been along the way. And I was thinking like, there's probably two specific ways that I would describe that journey, and it is um, God's presence and God's people. And we're going to be talking more about God's presence when it comes to the church. But I wanted to talk about God's people because so far these seven years has been all about the people, the people that the church brings together. And it's all because of Jesus, but people come and they connect in this space, and it's just amazing. I was thinking about a couple, uh, John and Karen, who are still with us uh, at Hope Community Church. And um, I remember meeting them only a few weeks into the launch of Hope Community. And what we actually did is we led 
box dropped thousands of flyers into local letter boxes. So we wanted to let everyone know that we were in the area. So we printed off all these flyers and we went just um, walked the streets and dropped them in people's letter boxes. And I remember the day that John and Karen turned up to church and they said, oh, we actually got one of your flyers in our letter box. And they said it was so strange because we'd, we'd only just been talking about how we wanted to find a local church. And then your flyer turns up in the mail and we thought we'd go and check it out. And so they turned up one morning. They lived so close that when they got to church and they heard our worship, they realized that they were actually hearing our worship from their house every Sunday. That's what they were listening to. And of course, they settled in. They found their place. Hope Community became home for them. And what was a huge privilege for me is meeting these two amazing people and getting to know these people who I possibly would never have met otherwise. This is what happens. The church brings people together. I think about the people that have come together over the years and heard about Jesus for the very first time. I think about the friendships that have been made, the people that have come together and made friendships at Hope Community and now they have lifelong friends in that space. I think about what happens when people come together. When people come together, there's a huge amount of potential for change when they come together with a common purpose. There's a huge uh, amount of potential for impact when people come together because they work together, they have a vision that they work towards and they bring their passions and their giftings and they also bring their resources as well. So in, in church, um, we bring our tithes and we want to live in a way that is generous. And of course, these resources come together and they fuel the mission and people can achieve great things. There's a great potential for impact. And I also think there's a great potential for growth when people come together because you put yourself around other people, which means you become accountable to other people. You put yourself in a place where you have to learn, you have to learn about other people and you have to learn about yourself. And you put, your, you put yourself in a position where you can find some of the purpose that God has for you in life. And so I love the church. I love the way that Jesus brings people together. What I love the most is that when you see people coming together in this space is that God starts to transform lives. This is the best part. And so he starts to transform individuals and then he starts to transform communities and then he starts to transform cities and then he starts to transform the world around us. This is what happens when people come together in the name of Jesus. And it's not hard to see that I am a big fan of the church and it's because I know that God does great things when the church is meeting together and they're living and breathing as God intends, then amazing things happen in this space. And so I want to jump in and take you to a passage in Ephesians 2 where Paul actually talks about the church. And in this passage, he's explaining how uh, Jesus is for everyone. There's a question mark over whether Jesus was just for the Jews or whether he was for other people as well. And he's saying Jesus is for everyone. And he's also talking about how Jesus' death actually made it possible for two different groups of people to be able to be united, to be able to come together. So this is in Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm going to read to you from the message translation today just because I love the way the message puts this. This is verse 16. It says, Christ brought us together through his death on the cross. The cross got us to embrace, and that was the end of the hostility. Christ came and preached peace to you outsiders and peace to us insiders. He treated us as equals and so made us equals. Through him, we both share the same spirit and have equal access to the Father. And so this is so relevant today. Wherever there is tension and separation between people in the world, this is just so applicable. Verse 19, it says, that's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building a home. 
He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here in what he is building. He used the apostles and prophets for the foundation, and now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple built by God. All of us built into it, a temple in which God is quite at home. Isn't that a great passage? And my first point today is that the church is you and me. And what I love about coming to Jesus in faith, that that moment of salvation, is that when someone gets saved, there is automatically a home for them. And I'm not just talking about a home for them in heaven, that's an amazing thing in itself, but a home for them on earth, a home where they connect with other followers of Jesus, a place that God has for them to serve and to find purpose and to grow. And it says here in our text, it says, you belong here. That's what this home is all about. In the NIV, it says, you are members of his household. But you know, sometimes um, for all different reasons, Christians actually choose not to step in and connect with the church. And the hard thing is that when they do that, they actually miss out on all the things that God actually designed to take place in the context of church. And we're going to talk about those things more in the coming weeks. Um, But that's the disappointment here. The flip side of that is that it's so great When people choose to step into the church and they embrace what God has for them in that space and you see the fullness of God's plan and purposes for us in the context of church. It says here in our passage that we are all bricks in the temple that God is building. And so I want you to know this today is that you are needed. And if you choose not to jump in, to the church, then the wall is actually missing out on a brick. And of course, the wall needs every brick. And so I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way, but if you choose not to engage, it's not just that you miss out on what God has for you, but it's that other people actually miss out on you, on what you were going to bring as a brick in the wall. And so one of my passions is actually seeing people find their home, seeing people find their place. And whether it's because of their uh, giftings, they find a place to serve, that's wonderful. Whether it's because uh, they find the people that they connect with, whether it's just because they find just purely a place where they meet with Jesus, when they find that home and they realize that that's That's what I'm all about. I'll never get sick of seeing people find that place. My second point today is this, is that the church is us. What I mean by that is that the church is not just about me or you, but it's about all of us together. And so I'll put it this way in our passage. It said he's using us all, irrespective of how we got here, in what he is building. So we all have a part to play in the church. It talks about this in Romans chapter 12. And it says this, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. You know, I, I remember um, early days in Hope Community, um, we were working crazy hours to kind of make everything happen and really get the church off the ground. I remember, I think we were about two weeks in, right? And someone had this idea that we needed to have a newsletter. If we're going to be a church, you need a newsletter, right? So I thought, well, right, okay, maybe we do need a newsletter so we can keep people up to date on what's going on. Anyway, we didn't have many people kind of doing many things back then. So here I am, I find myself on Saturday nights, I am printing out the newsletter in our in our home office and we've just got this teeny little office printer where we're printing you know hundreds of newsletters 
And um, the worst part about this printer was that it could only print single-sided. Our newsletters were double-sided. So you have to print off one side and then you'd have to flip them over. You have to load them back in the printer in the exact right way and then you'd have to print the second side. And I remember here we were, we were printing these newsletters and we were doing the pastoral care and we were, um, I don't know, shopping for all new stuff for the church and we were preaching on Sundays and we were helping with the worship and we were just, we were just doing everything in that crazy season. And we were keen back then and, and I remember it like it was, it was, I remember it in a really positive way. It was a great, it was a great time. I don't know if, if we were to go back and do it again, if we'd actually do it differently. But I do know that here we are now, and I love this season so much more. And the reason I love it more is because now we have all these people who are involved. We have all these ministry leaders, and we have more opportunities for people to connect in and be a part of Jesus' church than ever before. And I love that. And one of the things I love most about this is that there are so many things that I am not doing now. And I'm not just saying that because I'm lazy. I'm saying that because um, if I'm doing them, then someone else is missing out on the opportunity to do them. Whereas if I'm not doing them, then there's an opportunity for someone else to do something. And that's what we're all about. Church is us. Church is all of us together. There is a place for all of us in Jesus' church. My final point is this, is the church is all about Jesus. And so without Jesus, we're not the church and there is no church. But with Jesus, the church exists and is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I want to tell you a couple of things about Jesus and his church. First of all, Jesus unites us. And so we're talking at the start about how Jesus brings all these people together and it's an amazing thing. But that's not just the unity that I'm talking about. There's this beautiful unity when we come together in that space. But there's this unity that we have spiritually as we come together because we're saved and because we are living for Jesus. There's an amazing unity that we have in that space as well. Galatians 3 puts it this way. It says, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. And so what it's saying here is that our faith in Christ actually unites us as children of God. We're this family. We're his church. In our passage in Ephesians 2, it puts it this way. It says, now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. And so it talks about Jesus as the cornerstone. The cornerstone was the stone that went down and, that, and it gave all the other stones um, direction and set them on the right course. Without that cornerstone, uh, the building could look completely out of shape. And so the point is that we need Jesus. Like Jesus is everything. Not only does he give us purpose, not only does he unify, but Jesus is the church. And I want to read to you what the Bible says. The Bible says um, that the church is Jesus' church and that we are the body the body of Christ, and Jesus is the head. And we read in Matthew 16, Jesus makes this statement that you've probably heard before, but he says, I will build my church and the gates of hell won't be able to stop it. And so what we see in this statement is that the church is Jesus' church. He says, I will build my church. And we see that Jesus is building the church. And so the church is being built. He, he was building it back then and the church is st still being built. And so what I want you to hear is in, in this season where we can't gather as one large church, the church doesn't stop. And COVID-19 can't stop the church existing. Just because we can't meet in big facilities in big numbers doesn't mean that the church ceases to exist. 
because Jesus said that even the gates of hell won't stop the church being built, let alone COVID-19. So nothing is going to stop the church of Jesus moving forward. And here's the great news, is that you and I get to be a part of this church, a church that has stood the test of time, a church that has been persecuted and still flourishes and moves forward, and a church that is going to outlast you and I. We get the honor and the privilege of calling this church our home. But here's one of the problems is that with Jesus being in the center of it all, sometimes when we find a home, we get comfortable in that space. And when we get comfortable, we start to get distracted by other things. And it's easy sometimes for us to start um, getting more interested with um, a group of people, like that might be what church is about and home's about, or it might be um, about how we get comfortable just how with how things are done in church. And so we can get distracted from the main point, and the main point is Jesus. And what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to remember that Jesus is right at the center, that it's always all about Jesus. We need to have that ability to always bring it back to Jesus. This is what it's all about. So this is church. This is week one. Church is you and me. Church is us. And church is all about Jesus. And this is such a relevant message to us right now. While we can't meet as our big gathering, while we're meeting in these smaller spaces, um, maybe you're feeling a bit lost right now. Maybe you're feeling a bit lost in your faith right now because you're not able to meet in the way that we were able to meet. Maybe you look back and you think, man, like I really loved the way things used to be and now everything's different. But here's here's what I want you to know. I want you to know that this is an amazing opportunity for all of us to realize that we are still a part of the church, that that hasn't changed, that the church hasn't ceased to exist. The church is still moving forward. God is still doing great things in this space. And I want you to know afresh today that God has a place for you. It's a place where you belong. It's in his church and it's a place where you play such an important role. So as I finish up or as as, as we finish up our time together today, What I'd love you to do uh, with the people you're with or even if you're by yourself is just to spend some time praying. I'd love you to spend time praying for our church. I'd love you to spend time praying for all, all our local churches in the area and just praying for the church at large, our, our global church. And pray for people in this season who may be feeling lost and disconnected in this space and pray for the church in the sense that maybe it seems like there's not a lot happening in this season, that maybe maybe the kingdom is just not taking ground in this space. Let's be people who who are praying that in this season, God is doing great things. And it may look different to what we've known in the past, but God can do new things all the time. And he's always working for good. And let's just be full of faith and praying into what God is doing in this season. So I'm going to leave you with that. God bless church and uh, we'll see you soon.